So the Ethnic Cultural Center is a center on the UW campus that was born out of the student protests of the early 1970s. Um, students of color found that they were very underrepresented on campus and that there wasn't a place for them. And part of the first thing that they um, asked for was space, um, space where they could develop community. And so uh, the funding, I think, for building the Ethnic Cultural Center was allocated in 1972, years after um, the Office of Minority Affairs and Diversity was formed. This project has been going forward since 2007. And um, initially, we submitted a uh, request for funding to do a feasibility study. The feasibility study was to uh, begin to look at the current existing building and how we can enhance or improve the current site. And students had raised concerns about the size of the, of the center, that it, you know, it wasn't adequate enough to meet the number of um, clubs and organizations that are affiliated with the ECC. But it wasn't until Rusty Barcelo left and I was appointed interim, and the process for appointing the interim vice president raised a lot of questions and concerns amongst the ECC community. Um, after my appointment as the interim and the demonstrations, then the students from the Ethnic Cultural Center had a meeting with President Emmert, and they laid out all of the things that they thought um, had been ignored in their communities, and the, the renovation and expansion of the Ethnic Cultural Center was at the top of the list. After a year-long study, it was determined that uh, the best option was to build a new building which then led us to uh, the next phase, which was pre-design. So the pre-design then takes um, what was done in this initial feasibility study that uh, Capital Projects had worked on and brought that up to speed to then we could go into the design phase. And so this project is a bigger project, so we typically do what's called the uh, three-phase design. So the pre-design leads into schematic design. And then schematic design leads into design development, which is where we're just finishing up now. And this is now going to turn into construction documents. Construction documents are the actual documents that we will put out to bid, and that's what the building will be built from. So we'll be starting those probably in early November. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at the updated design and development of how the ECC is going to look. We're excited about some of the new ideas and new designs of the building. Um, we're going to have a large a multi-purpose room that will be able to house up to 200 to 250 students or an event. And then we'll have um, medium-sized meeting rooms as we move up through the building. But the building is organized so that um, the bottom floor or the ground floor um, is basically the main circulation space and kind of the, you know, it's the real entry to the building, how people get organized as they come into the building now. Um, they get a feel for how the building lays out. And the building is designed with an atrium space so that all three floors are visible from one another. So once you've come in the front entry to the ECC, um, you not only can see what's happening on the first floor, but you get a snippet of what's happening up above you on the second and third floor. It's an exciting time. It's also a very scary and sad time, as we know that this place has, has meant a lot of student, to a lot of students for a number of years, to a number of alumni, to a number of staff members, to a number of OME staff members in the university. But we feel that it's an exciting time uh, because of the, the new possibilities, the new adventures that we'll create in the new space and the commu new community that we can create. Well, one of the things that it's gonna do that's gonna be so uh, refreshing is the perception has been that this was a temporary building, that the commitment to diversity was only temporary. I think having this new building, it will be, first of all, it's a permanent building. It's built to the 100-year standards of every other building on the university campus. That in itself will be huge because it, it's a permanent commitment and a permanent place for diversity and for students of color on this campus.